Welcome to this EULACIRC screencast. EULACIRC was written to help researchers analyse and visualise circular and linear RNA transcripts from high throughput sequencing datasets. This screencast provides a walkthrough introduction on how to use EULACIRC for a simple but powerful bioinformatic analysis. When you start EULACIRC, you commence on the Setup tab. And here is where, um, you can, we can load a transcriptional database under the organism heading. We're going to load a human HG38 genome. We're now going to navigate to the Projects tab to load a data set. And there's a data set that comes with this package called 2Zabo. These are two heart data sets. And when you press load, this associated metadata tab comes up and gives you a little bit of insight. So this data set contains two Circuit Explorer 2 data sets, two star backsplice junctions, which is a chimeric read output from the star aligner, and forward splice junctions from the star aligner. And it gives you a little bit of information about the, uh, the samples themselves. We can see the two sample IDs that are displayed, and we can look at the way they're grouped. There are two groups, and each one is a symbol to a group. We can now move to the, the Gene View tab, where we can start to assemble data. Now, under the Table Display options, we can display data via the selected, which is through um, the samples that are selected within this region, or we can do it through the groups. This is how they're grouped under this part of the software. So we'll build the table on the grouped. We've got group two and group one, and this is for the Circuit Explorer data. We can do the same for the, the star output, the chimeric star output. And we're gonna wanna annotate with the parental gene name, and we're gonna sample 10 junctions, and we'll build that table. Now this is more CPU intensive, so it takes a bit of time to build this table of 10 entries. Whereas that Circuit Explorer one we built was of the entire data set from a Circuit Explorer analysis. Now we can quickly flip back and forth between these two data sets quite quickly. And in either of these views, we can select an item. So let's say we want to look at the HIPK3. We can come and visualize it through the display gene transcripts. And we get an integrated visualization of back splice junctions and forward splice junctions, which are overlaid with a G model. So here we can see a back splice junction, which is exon two. And there are some interesting observations from the forward splice junctions. So we have a forward splice junction here that supports the G model. We have a novel forward splice junction that suggests that there would be another exon that starts around here that matches with our circular RNA. We can retrieve the sequence of this backsplice junction by going to Junction View. And this will, re will retrieve our, um, our backsplice junction sequence, gives us a little bit of information about the parental gene. Um, we can look to see if there's any open reading frames. And for this particular one, there's a, a, an open reading frame that's actually the length of the circle plus uh, a little bit more. Um, we can look for microRNA binding sites. Um, navigating back to the, the Gene View tab, uh, we can also do a little bit more analysis on the, on the, under the tab boat view. So if we go to plots, we can have a look at the number of unique circular RNAs that are in each sample. Um, we can do a PCA plot. This tells you that I need to make sure it's normalized. So we'll come back here and we'll select a count per million. And we get a, a very simple PCA plot. We can do a heat map of the most variable samples. So you can see that SLCA1 is actually quite high in group one compared to the other ones. We can also look at the cumulative distribution. We've got a, a similar distribution. And the number of genes that produce the circular RNA. So there are more genes in group in group two that produce circular eyes and that they're in, in group one. So that gives you a very quick taste of 
what you can do with Euler Circ. Um, keep an eye out for future features and let me know if you have any, any questions. Thank you for watching.